Yep, Atlanta's the only hip-hop station inside on the 7-9. You dirty J. Nick's Fly Scout Radio, man. President, I'm checking in one time for the one time. You know, I told y'all we had a uh, first interview of the year. I think I said it before. You know what I'm saying? But I, I'm happy that this one has to be my first one. It's a good friend of mine. Yeah. Mr. Lloyd's in the building. Yeah. Mr. Southside's hey. in the building. Hey, what's up, ATL? <laughs> what's hey, great way to start the year off right here, man. What's Even going for on, me, man? man? To be here with y'all, man. Great cats. You know what I mean? Great spirits. Nothing but positive energy. Hard working, man. You know what I mean? Y'all always... Showing love to all the artists, old, sure. old school and new school. You know, old school, you know what man. I mean? And, um, <laughs> man, just a great time to count your blessings. If you're listening, happy new year to you. Hope your last one uh, was great. This one, let's make it better. You know what I mean? Lord, you, we've been in the game for a long time, man. It's it's like a lot of people don't get the opportunity to can still say put out music and how how do you feel? How do you how do you do that? You, I mean, like from from the first album you put out to dropping true to just dropping music here and there, it's like. Everybody can't get enough of Lloyd. Like you can always come back and put something out, man. Like, what? Why? How do you? How do you feel about that? Cause so we are such in a microwave generation right now, where they like what they like right then yeah. and there. But now it's kind of like with yeah. you, you're still <laughs> able to put out music and still just be just as relevant as you was when you left. I think ninety percent of it is out of my hands. Mm. You know, like out of my control. Something I never understand. It's just energy. You know what I mean? It's just kind of I don't know relatability or something. Uh, and you just feel what you feel. You like what you like. So part of that part of the equation is beyond me, and right. I give it up, you know, to the greater glory. But I think ten percent of it is always just never going too far outside of myself. You know, outside of my my zone. You know what I mean? Just staying true to myself. Um, what makes me comfortable? Right. Um, in music and also outside of music. You know, even with my business behind the music, never really like. Um, I guess. Uh, selling myself short, right? You know what I mean, like really, like respecting the game, um, you know, respecting the opportunity, and um, also I think really just keeping love in my life, you right. know, and, and having genuine love not only for other people but for myself. Right. You know what I mean? So I treat it like that, and and it just comes back to me. Like you know, that's the that's the secret. That's the boomerang. Like you've been in the game for a long time. Like we was, I think, like just because, like I said, we've been cool for a long time and we know each other. We had to just. Earlier, we were just talking about records you've been part of, like mm -hmm. Bedrock, Lil Wayne, Bedrock, the whole Young Money, when they first launched it off. Yeah. Murder, Inc. Yeah. Yep. I was scared to say that because I was just like, Am I, let me let me make sure I remember. Murder, Inc., yeah. one of the legendary labels that, that like, ever existed in the history of hip-hop. Like, yeah. And you still, like, how was that back then? Like, what was what was different from the game back then and then it is now? As oh, far as well, just working with them guys. Well, in a lot of ways, it was, um, first of all, it was a lot more money right. spent. I mean, Southside video costs five hundred thousand dollars. Shut up! Wow. Just for the video, wow. You know, and um, it was like normal. That was kind of like not even expensive at the time. I mean, yeah, Hype Williams and Dave Myers and them doing videos for a million plus. Wow. You know, almost two million dollars. Um, also, I I also r realized that um, I came into the ink. You know, when they was still hot. You know, what I mean, I mean, right. Shanti was breaking records. Right for songwriting and performing, you know, the first uh, artist to have a number one, number two, and number three song on the charts. Yeah. At the same time, um, of course, Ja was like crazy. Crazy. And then uh, I came in, you know, pretty much like inspired by by Dungeon Family and Attic Crew and, and TLC and Dallas and right. just kind of brought my own team. And I realized that from day one, I kind of had the mentality of, I don't know, like a, a Southern boss, like my right. own thing, you know what I mean? So uh, I remember uh, in particular uh, my first record that I ever leaked and promoted by myself, spent my own money for radio and for promotion and all that kind of thing was you with, with Wayne. Wow. And at the time, Katrina had just happened, so that was crazy personally. Right. And then the ink was pretty much frozen because they was going through the feds. It right. was in a federal trial, right. I mean. So you been through it. The the the, the ja, you was you was there with the Ja Rule and Fifty Cent beef. Yeah, I remember records you and Eight Ball MJG. Yeah, and you was like the only cat that I knew could sing R and B on a hood. I'm talking about yeah. on the hoods of the ghettoest ghetto. Yeah, that was my first feature. Then Eight Ball I was MJG. 17. Yeah, I recorded that when I was 17, and then two years later they heard it with Sean Dre. Shout out to him. Shout out to Ball G. And we still cool to this day, man. Man. Yeah. So look, okay, so it came across the desk. About this B2K tour. Yeah. What's going on with that? Uh, well, I was reached out to recently. Um, they asked me to be a part of it. 
um, if if it happens, which I believe it will. We kind of in the last stages of negotiating, but man, um, one of my first shows that I ever did as a solo artist, I was in a group from uh, the age of ten to thirteen group called In Tune. Uh-huh. Google it. Okay, oh, I got, y'all I got, I never got heard of it. It'll <laughs> trip you out. And then my first um, solo performance, was, I signed a Magic Johnson for my first deal. Wow. One of my first uh, performances was at All-Star Weekend. And um, I performed alongside B2K at the time, who was real hot. I mean, they was, they was huge, man. And um, those guys, they was real gracious towards me. They was real cool, laid back, wasn't doing too much, right. you know, in my opinion. And um, so when they reached out to me, asked me to be a part of it, I was kind of honored, you know what I mean, because... You know, on a personal level, they always show me a lot of love. Right. So I'm happy to be a part of it, show love. You know, I'm definitely happy to bring some of the new music to every city, like True and Caramel. Right. And, um, yeah, just get back to the stage. So I always want to ask this question. I, I don't, I, I'm trying to remember and take, I'm trying to go back in time to like how Atlanta was when you went Southside dropped and as far as the labels. What made you decide to go with Murder Inc. versus a label that was coming up in Atlanta or, or Atlanta-based label? Because they was black-owned, mm. and that was inspirational to me. I mean, that's kind of what I wanted to be like one right. day. So I, in my opinion, um, you, you are the equation of, you know, like you're the common denominator of the people you hang around. Right. And I, I saw a lot of myself in, you know, people like Irv, people like Ja, and I wanted to, you know, soak up the game and be around them. Also, the fact that, I could ride my own way. Right. You know what I mean? There was no one there to create my sound. I brought my own team, me and Jasper, eventually brought in Jazzy. You know what I mean? Right. And then we just built we just built our own team and became self sufficient. And they had a New York kind of thing going on. And then I had my own thing. And I really liked that. I liked the fact that um no one was gonna write my songs, no one was gonna, you know, tell me what to wear or how to dress. And also the fact that um I felt like that was the best place to be at the time. I mean, right. it's just good energy. You've, you've had an influence of music for close to a decade now. Um, I think off air we were talking about being young OGs and, and contributing so much <laughs> to this culture. You know, yeah. How does it feel to, to have done so much in almost a 10-year span and touched so many people? Hey, I mean, I'll be the first to say I ain't the king. You know what I mean? I never wanted to be. I never will be. I mean, I'm my own king. I'm a king amongst kings. But, right. man, just really, like, just count my blessings, man, you know, is really, like, the motto of the day. Just really humbled to have those opportunities and really, more importantly, to have the right people around when I didn't know what to do or how to move myself to kind of guide me. So, I mean, that's really, like, what it's all about with me, really is, like, a reflection of the people that's behind me. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. How do you, how do you think the music the I guess the early two thousands um, R and B has it has um, pretty much like influenced the young people today? Do you do you feel do you when you hear some of the younger music, the younger R and B cast, do you feel like they've been pulling for from like older R and B cast? Like, I think that used to be like back in the day, like your favorite Keith Sweats and LSG and all those guys. Like you listen to them, like man, it's Donnell hard. Jones, yeah, yeah, Donnell Jones and Case and. Like, do you think that the young people are, are pulling from the early 2000s? Like, what, as far as the influence in music? Yeah, because, uh, I mean, you know, eventually you stop just having sex. You start making love. Right. You know what I mean? You start looking for, for content in your life. You, uh, you know, you start having real conversations, you know, with life. You know what I mean? Right. You go through things, and then you need to express them. I mean, that's really what, like, the 90s era was really about. It was, like, a lot of soul going on. Right. You know what I mean? And, um over boom bap but it was a lot of soul and uh i think people are going back to that also i think just the fact that um you know 90s r&b also incorporated a lot of live musicianship Mm. and there's nothing that can make you feel like a real instrument i mean you know so just putting that back into it i'm not really sure but i'm glad that it is that way because there's a lot of great music from that era and um I don't know. Maybe it's just that the, the great things never die. It's just classics. Right. I, I mean, I think, I, I think you know what? I was there in DR when you performed in Dominican Republic, Memorial Day weekend. Those right. folks sang <laughs> your yeah. music like you yeah. just came out. Yeah, that's how I knew I was a young G because I was at an all-white party <laughs> yeah. with a bunch of old schools in there. I mean, 
Jamming Every, though. Everybody in there was older than me, but they was jamming. Jamming killed yeah, it. Yeah. Definitely supposed to be on that. So uh, as far as like, what what can we what, if this B two K tour come on? Like, what kind of show? What kind of show can we expect Lloyd to bring? Like, well, my last uh, performance and my first performance in a while uh, at home took place at Center Stage okay. a couple months back. And um, Matt, I missed it. Yeah, it was great, man. I mean, at the time, I did a, a ten piece band. I had a uh, Horns Unlimited, Outcast's Horn Section wow. come out and rock with me. Um, Abdul Raul from SOS Band came oh, out wow. and did a horn solo for me. I had my girl CC come out on the skates. Uh, I brought some of my my old partners back. They used to dance with me, and we bust out some of the old routines hey. to like get shoddy and you and man, just I don't you know I just uh, try to leave it all out there, really, man, and and um, never really worry about what everybody else is doing. You right. know, just do my own thing. Um, I'm, I'm not sure who all is on who is on there. So maybe if you know, you can enlighten I mean, the listeners I, 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 I and myself. Hearing, I know I've been hearing Chingy. Okay. Of course. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Uh, B2K. What was you done heard? I think I think I just know that uh, yes, Marion's not following any of the B2K <laughs> members. That's what I just recently saw on social yeah, media. Yeah, I hope they don't mess the money up. Yeah, yeah I don't want them to mess the money up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. That's so sad when that yeah, happens. Yeah, because I think, I think, the, cause I think it every, happens, though. I think yeah. everybody was so excited. Like, I see grown men and thugs though. talking about some man, I'm about to get me an airbrush t shirt. Like, it's brought back. That same feeling, yeah, like you know, what I'm saying, being brought back though. Sure. Like everybody's saying the same thing. Like the memes been going crazy. Have you seen any memes from the concert? Nah, but I know a lot of my family members been hounding me for tickets. <laughs> and I'm like, man, I ain't even really like finished negotiating. Huh? <laughs> I mean, they already like hounding me, and I'm kind of mad because I know they ain't coming to see me. They're coming to see B2K. <laughs> you did. Yeah, like I know. So I know him already. Mad. But yeah, that's the plug. Yeah. So what are you working on outside of music? Oh, man, you know, my, my number one priority, my main job is just being the best father I could be. Man. I was about so to act, that was my next question. My, my father um, died when I was real young, and that was really like a big part of my life growing up. It was really like a defining moment for me. So the moment that I, I witnessed the birth of my, my two kids, it just kind of, you know, it, it redirected, it shifted my motivation. Right. And a lot of times it's just really being there to nurture them, you know, give them all the time I can and the energy and the laughter, chasing my son around till we both pass out every right. day. Uh, and then, you know, sneaking in a few recordings. Um, of course, True was my first independent release. It's now platinum. I'm Congratulations. I'm super proud of that. Congratulations. Um, Caramel is a, a new release that we are about Moving. to start pushing right now. And um, also... Uh, I just read from my first movie script Dope. the wow. other day for a DeBarge movie that they doing. Okay. For the DeBarge family. Uh, yeah, man, I mean, you know, just, you know, taking it a day at a time, really. What, what, what's the difference now? Like, now that you're older, it seems like, like it's just like the, the care about what's important in life has changed. Yeah, well, I mean, I still go. I mean, you know, music has right. always been, like, my first passion and my true passion. So on the weekends, I, I sneak out from the crib. You know, get the nanny to come by, right. and then I go on the road, and I do my thing, and get my thing off, and then I bring the bag back and put it into the, the kids' trust fund. Got to right. bring the bag. I ain't mad about that. I mean, that's really what, what it is oh, right so, now. So, look, sure. this is what I always, I always been on uh, recently, because I'm a father, too, um, and started counting as a father. What would you tell some of these young cats that has, I would say, I wouldn't say they made a mistake, but probably made a mistake of not being in their children's lives and how important it is to be a father in this generation? Growing up with our young black kids, like what would you tell some of these fathers to encourage them to do better? I I just feel like sometimes sometimes like your baby mama's issues and things going on in life and you not feeling like I don't necessarily always blame the man from running. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes women can get on your head and make you feel like you lower than low, and then you just feel like, well, if you just do it yourself, like. But what would you tell? What encouraging words could you tell some of the young men out there that might not necessarily be in their kids' lives? Well, I just I think that um, you know. It's a blessing to be to find beauty and being selfless sometimes, or not all the time. I mean, and also, you know, you plant the seed. You just you continue to plant the seeds that you want to see grow. Right. I mean, because um, you know, it all comes around. You know, pretty much in life. And also, I think um, you know, sometimes it is hard to get out of your own feelings. But just always remember that these people didn't ask to be here. Right. You know, nobody asked to be born. Right. You know what I mean. So um. You know, there's that. Um, personally, you know, I draw from such a personal, deep experience of losing my father. Um, so I just dreamed of, you know, being that one day. Right. And then I grew up around a lot of great 
great men, you know, great fathers and and leaders like a Dallas Austin or um, a Gerald Bugsby or um, a Magic Johnson. And these guys really like was like the blueprint for me. So I just carry that with me every day. I also know what it's like to to not have, you know right. what I mean? So that always make you want to go out your way. Push and, harder. And and I also believe, you know, that um, sometimes things don't work out between, you know, two people. But that should never mean that you can't be friends. I mean, you know, any great love should be built on friendship first. So right. there's that also. But it is tricky. It's a tricky, it's a tricky. You know tricky, what? I, you know? I, I always ask guys yeah, that it. because like some of the young guys that I, I've met and I've interviewed over the years, they just tell me how important being a father is. And usually kind of somewhat had the same story, whether their father had passed or been locked up. Yeah. But it's I always try to give them an encouraging ear because if that one person considers what you say or what I say or what another artist say and decides to be a better father and change his life, it means the world to our next leaders of, of America and, and our black people. So yeah. I always like to make sure I express that and, and let the, our famous people express that too because I feel like y'all y'all have such an influence on people's lives and they feel like oh, Lloyd could do it, I could do it. You know what I'm saying? If yeah, Stewie man. can do it, yeah. I could do it. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, there's still examples out there to this day. I mean, I... I I'm really in tune with like my history. Right. Like that fascinates me. Um, I collect vinyl and I listen to a lot of Martin Luther King vinyl. Right. And, like Malcolm X vinyl. And you know, these dudes was fathers too, but they was also like fathers to everybody. everybody I yeah. mean, just how selfless of them. You know, people give their life just to give you life. Mm. You know what I mean? And then you gotta you gotta consider that, you know, the people that like the real riders, the warriors that came before us that gave us the opportunity to even be selfish if we want to be so right. yeah okay let's get back to this music new uh, new project out right now yeah man you let, know let them know about it where they can find it this is uh off the true album which is everywhere you know streaming i mean title gave me love apple music gave me a lot of love um amazon and, and um spotify gave me a lot of love and uh it's my first independent album true uh, of course on the album you could find the likes of Cujo Goody, okay. who's on track one, OG. Right. Um, who else? On Seven Streeter. Of course, my man Wheezy, right. who's back in the game. Thank God. Who you talking about? And um, Currency, my, okay. my other Spitter. dog, you know, from day one, beginning in Young Money. And yeah, man, you know, just good music. So True was the first one. And then Caramel is, is uh, the follow up. Well, go ahead and introduce it then, bro. Hey, ATL, all surrounding areas, all the zones, one through six. Turn this up right here. This is Lloyd, J. Nix, New Music, Caramel. There it is. Dirty Lloyd. Boys, keep listening. How on 7 nine. Lloyd, just to commemorate your, your new year and our new year, Atlanta as a as a whole, um, I'm going to one of your tweets that you tweeted for the first time of the year. Um, it says it's going to be a beautiful year. And I believe that for you and for everybody listening, man. It's going to be a, definitely be a beautiful year, man. I appreciate you for coming through, brother. Hey, man. Thank y'all for having me. There it is. Y'all some of the realest. You understand that? Brand new Lloyd right here. Caramel, let's get it. Jasper, I see you, big dog. I'm on 7-9.